You right now listening to this video might be winning a large chunk of silver for free. Two of you actually, so your chances just doubled. All you have to do is click one button, subscribe. Once we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to jump out of an airplane and announce the two winners mid-flight with a GoPro attached to my helmet so you could watch it all unfold. Yes, this is serious. I'm going skydiving in celebration of 100,000 subscribers so you can celebrate winning while I'm literally falling out of the sky, hopefully not to my death. Make sure you don't miss it because this will be a beautifully horrific sight to see. This week's specials at Miles Franklin are 1 ounce Silver Maples, $3.39 over spot, 1 ounce Palladium Bars, $119 over spot, Gold, Queen Elizabeth, Sovereigns, $26.99 over melt, plus a massive inventory, all great prices. Email me or call me, slayer at milesfranklin.com. I will hook you up. Right now, at the ratio being around 80, uh, that certainly suggests strongly to me that silver is quite undervalued versus gold and that it's likely to start rising against gold. In 2011, that ratio bottomed, had a, had a clear bottom again at 30, meaning it took 30 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. And um, that was a peak, at, uh, at least a, um, a mid bull, as far as I'm concerned, a bit of a mid bull peak uh, in the silver price. It reached $49, it didn't stay there for long. Uh, but if you use that ratio and saw that while this is an outlier, uh, silver is usually not this expensive versus gold, it may be time to take some profits in silver. And to make an even stronger claim to his point of the gold to silver ratio being 80 to 1, meaning that gold is overvalued compared to silver or vice versa, it's not 80 to 1, it's actually 89 to 1, meaning there's an even greater chance of this happening. But what determines the price of silver? What dynamics drive the price of silver? I want to break this down in this video. We have a lot to unpack. I really hope you guys uh, stick all the way through because we're probably going to be diving into some other articles. Maybe will silver rise to $100? What would this look like? What are the chances? What would the obstacles be that silver would have to overcome? Um, what's the time frame? Uh, what would the economy look like for this to happen? What would the dollar look like for this to happen? Is it possible? Is it all just a load of BS? Uh, let's just have an open, honest, and realistic perspective on this. But if you're going to try to determine the price of something, you have to determine what affects the price of said thing. So I found an article that was written two days ago, What Dynamics Drive the Price of Silver? Now, you've probably heard me mention in the past that I do think that someday silver will start to take on a life of its own. Regardless of what stock market volatility is doing, silver will move more free upon its own wishes. And even not just stock market volatility, even something such as gold. Why are gold and silver's prices so, so strongly correlated when they're used for two completely different things? We could even go to, as far as, say, the dollar index. We are going to start seeing things push and pull silver's prices to different degrees as it has forever, right? Every, it, it, this isn't just as, as uh, black and white as, oh, the dollar index moves silver 15% while gold moves silver 20%. But, you know, it, it's not like, it doesn't work like that. And there's so many different factors and variables, not even just between these different commodities and assets, but politically, economically, geopolitically, speculatively, you know, and then adding in some type of price manipulation and corruption. There's a lot to it especially the silver rabbit hole. Silver is a much smaller asset, a much smaller market than gold is, and that's why it's much easier to influence the price. Also, why prices are much more volatile. Uh, so let's dive into this article titled, What Dynamics Drive the Silver Price? I think this will give us a better idea of what could happen to silver moving forwards given certain variables. So understanding silver pricing can be tricky because of the metal's dual nature. It is an industrial commodity, but fundamentally, silver is money. It's been money before gold's been money. It's a more, it's, it's a 
better money than gold if you think about it. Uh, look at our constitutional coins. A Mercury dime is perfect. It's a dime, right? Long Liberty half dollar. But for gold, gold is so valuable that if you are trying to buy something for a dollar and all you are using is gold portions, what you would have to use like a grain of gold sand, like 0.001. It's just not, it's just, it's not as, um, it's just not as effective in my opinion. I think gold is, you, you can use gold as a store value. I think it's great for that. And just because I share, I shared the ratio in the beginning of the 89 to one, meaning silver is going to outperform gold in the following year, doesn't mean that I'm against gold. Gold is a great uh, investment. And I think gold is more or of an investment or not. Let's put it like this. Gold is something I would look at more as putting my money in to hold its wealth as a store of value where silver has opportunity to capitalize on top beyond just the meat and potatoes of this safe haven metal. Because gold stores value. It is solely a monetary metal. Well, silver it's a monetary metal like it, this article just said, but it's also an industrial metal. So a recent report by the Silver Institute attempts to untangle the various factors that go into the price of silver, nothing that it's a difficult job. And I quote, the report finds that no magic formula or combination of factors consistently and accurately explains the level of change in the silver's price. While the price of silver is not a random walk, neither is its future path entirely predictable based on past trends. And that's exactly what I was just saying. There's no formula and you cannot determine it off past or future because different things are affecting the price to different percentages at any given day of the week, literally at any given day of the week. So let's say that the correlation between gold and silver start to split apart because silver's fundamental uses, the supply and demand fundamentals, the silver shortage, which there's no shortage of gold, uh, that starts to affect the price of silver more, which it should. Because if you're talking about especially something that has value within itself, intrinsic value, it, it is worth what it has inside of it an ounce of silver is valuable because of the ounce of silver inside of that coin not the price tag that determines its quote-unquote price or wealth then you could see something happening where fundamentals will overweigh any type of corruption like ted butler says you know you could try to manipulate the price of silver all you want but with the silver shortage to this degree and looking where it's headed that will always overcome any type of hurdle or any type of of um, corruption or manipulation going on behind the scenes but still you have to remember that silver is used for something completely different than gold it, i call it the best of both worlds because it is used for money it's a monetary metal but also an industrial metal and moving forward looking at the amount of silver we'll be needing in the next five to ten years and some, you know much further beyond but just to put things in perspective next five to ten years we don't have enough silver especially trying to go green and silver for military and aerospace and all these different things so that's going to start having a bigger push on silver's price beyond gold when that starts to break apart gold to silver ratio also since it's out of whack shows that has more leverage on top of these other factors industrial and technical applications account for roughly half of silver demand. In that sense, you will sometimes see the price movements correlate with the broader commodity complex. But at its core, silver is money. That brings other factors into the pricing equation, such as strength of the US dollar, like I was just mentioning, right? What the dollar index is doing, stock market volatility, uh, or trajectory of interest rates. That means silver typically moves to gold, especially over the long run. So when I quote, and, and actually just to stick with this point for a second it moves with gold especially for the long run so if gold is above two thousand dollars at highs we've never seen literally in the history of these six thousand years that gold has been seen as valuable if this is the highest price gold's ever been obviously i know it's not the right today it's not the highest but it's a well above two thousand you know that that two thousand plus range we're talking about all-time highs, in my opinion, you know, give or take $100, what's the difference? We're talking about something that is above $2,000, while silver is not even half of its all-time high. 
So I think of it as like two volcanoes. Gold's volcano already erupted. It exploded. Exploded. Silver's volcano has not erupted yet. It's still bubbling and boiling and the magma's building up. And then once it erupts, especially since it's been building longer, more magma's built up, the explosion will be bigger. Silver always follows gold. It just lags. It just lags sometimes. Silver volcano has not erupted yet, and that's proof. Because gold has broke past $2,000 and silver hasn't had its run yet, which always follows which always follows suit after gold does something big. So given that alone, uh, the biggest proof of that, the tool using the gold to silver ratio at 89 to 1 right now, where it comes out of the ground 7 to 1, historically it's been put at 16 to 1, but right now it's 90 to 1, then you can see the ratio is going to start dropping back down. Look right, right at this chart right here. It's at the peak. What happens when something peaks? It dips. It's not going to sit here. It's going to start dipping. When that happens, that means two things. Silver is outperforming gold, or gold is underperforming compared to silver, which means that silver is going to start rising faster than gold in the coming year. That's not saying that gold's a bad investment. That's just literally fact. And if the tables were the opposite, I would be saying the opposite, right? If the ratio was down here, let, or let's say, <laughs> that's not a big scale. Let's say March of 2020, the gold to silver ratio was 125 to 1. Silver was $11, right? I, I knew things were about to happen, but let's flip it. Let's say 2011, the gold to silver ratio is much, 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 much lower because silver is $50, while gold is relatively cheap. Silver is high. I would be saying gold is about to dramatically outperform silver because the gold to silver ratio is 40 to 1 or 50 to 1 or 60 to 1. You could even say it to 60 to 1 because of how out of whack the ratio is. My point is, I'm not saying this because my name is Silver Slayer. I'm saying, oh, Silver's about. I'm just saying, looking at the data right now, that's what it shows. If gold to silver ratio is 30 to 1 right now, and silver was $60, and gold is at 2,500, I would be saying gold is about to outperform silver in the next year because that's what the data would show. The gold to silver ratio is extremely low meaning gold is going to do better, meaning gold's overvalued, or meaning that silver's overvalued compared to gold, not to the dollar, silver is overvalued compared to gold, comparing the two metals. But at the end of the day, how can you determine one or the other when they're used for two completely different things? So um, there, here's a quote that they mention. Um, so supply and demand analysis is complicated by silver's legacy as a monetary metal and its continued acceptance as an investable asset. The result is that above ground stocks of bullion and investment demand play an outsized role in silver compared to other pure commodities such as copper or palladium where stocks are much smaller and investor interests far narrower and shallower. In this regard, silver is closer to gold whose price to an even greater extent is subject to changes of ownership in its huge level of above ground bullion stocks and investor sentiment towards the precious metal. That's kind of what I was saying before, and you're going to see, you're going to see this uh, facade, this, well, we, we have been, but I think um, especially as, as it becomes more obvious that silver is extremely, extremely undervalued and how important it is or the critical role it plays, I think we'll start to see more people um, start to capitalize in this or start to say, why, wait, why is silver only $23 if it's the most highly conductive metal or start to question the COMEX or these numbers or the Silver Institute like uh, Silver Academy has been doing and these numbers and are they accurate? But anyways, you can see from the charm, silver tends to outperform gold during a gold bull market. I call it gold on steroids. It hits higher highs and lower lows. It's a more exaggerated, more dramatic version of gold. So 
Um, so whether you're considering industrial demand, the current monetary climate, or both, silver appears to be significantly underpriced. Despite wishful thinking in the mainstream, inflation doesn't appear to be down and out. And if it is, that just means a return to inflationary policies with the Fed trying to push down interest rates. That's bullish for both gold and silver. There's also a strong likelihood that something will break in the economy in the near future. A financial system isn't built to operate in even a modestly high interest rate environment. Federal Reserve would almost certainly respond to a financial crisis by slashing interest rates to zero, restarting quantitative easing, also called QE, effectively printing money. These are inflationary policies. These are already signs of stress in the banking system and the commercial real estate market is ripe for a crisis. When there is high inflation, smart people want to hold real money. This is bullish for gold and silver. On the supply and demand side of the equation, silver is expected to hit a second highest level on record in 2024. All right, industrial demand for silver expected to lead growth on global demand driven by part growth of the green energy sector. And that's uh, according to a 2022 research paper by scientists at the University of New South Wales. Solar manufacturers could consume over 20% of current annual silver by 2027. By 2050, it could use 85 to 98% of global reserves. And that's just solar panels. So cut that in half, cut, cut 2050 in half because electric vehicles are also just as big, if not as uh, bigger, or will be as every automobile company by the year 2030 is going to be electric and the amount of silver used for AI chips and nuclear and batteries and so on and so forth and military and satellites and drones. The whole point is that it's much more severe than people realize. But even though, even if the economy crashes, government commitment to green energy will likely keep that mo keep the money in that sector. So people say, well, if, if the economy does bad, silver could be down because we're not going to be at flourishing. But we still have certain commitments and numbers projected that will still be set in place, guaranteeing that we will be using that silver or building the solar panels that require that silver, the PV cells, photovoltaic cells. So Silver Institute projects another market deficit in 2024 with demand outstripping supply. That would mark the fourth straight year of a structural market deficit and further cut into silver reserves, which the military industrial complex or our defense department has already been raiding our supply and taking our reserves because we need silver for nuclear warheads and missiles and you know so given these dynamics between 22 23 dollars an ounce silver is on sale and that's extreme i mean if you could read this article and and then see silver's price and determine what it's used for and say that it's not on sale, you shouldn't be investing. And then the gold to silver ratio would appear to confirm the white metals underpriced, at least in rel the relation to gold. It's almost 90 to one, meaning it takes 90 ounces of silver to equal one, one ounce of gold. That's historically widespread. It's usually around, you know, uh, well, average it's 75 to one, but you know, we could say the average, let's say the past centuries, 75 to 1, even though for thousands of years it's around 16 to 1, 7 to 1 before that, because that's the ratio that comes out of the Earth's crust. But like I mentioned earlier, it fell to 30 to 1 in 2011, and that's when silver was $50. When the ratio was 30 to 1, I was saying gold is about to outperform silver. Gold is the better buy, because silver was $50. That's extremely overpriced compared to gold. Not saying $2,000 gold is overpriced, not saying $50 silver is overpriced, but to the gold to silver ratio, this showed that you should be buying gold right now because gold is going to start doing better than silver. And why would you want to buy silver at $50 when the year before it was a tenth of that? Why would you want to be buying gold right now when it's the all-time highest price it's ever been, thousands of years, and you have another option that is undervalued compared to that, which also has just as much, if not more, potential. Not saying gold's a bad investment. Just saying right now, in this current time, it makes much more sense to be buying silver. And that's just a fact, given data. So, um, anyways, um, you know, they, they go into this uh, 100 to 1 historic, that was insane. And, um, you know, 125 to 1, actually, it was. That was when silver was $11 and gold was still almost as high as it is today. Uh, and 
we'll be reading about that ratio in history books. But regardless, um, you know, as it still is, it's around 89 to 1. This shows that gold is extremely overpriced compared to silver. Not compared to the dollar, compared to silver. Both are great investments. But when comparing the dynamics or the, 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 uh, the key to determine silver's price, you have to keep you have to remember that gold does still play a much larger role than I think it should. I think that a lot of things do. Speculation, you guys know I hate that S word. Why is silver's price, you know, why, why should someone who assumes or fears or, or has a worrying doubt or even just misleading perspective on something affect the price of something that should be based off of supply and demand? The price, that, or, you know, how the rate comes out of the ground and what that runs for. Supply and demand. Low supply, high demand. Pushes the price up. High supply, low demand, shoots the price down. Especially with something that has an intrinsic value like gold and silver. There's a lot more to the puzzle because of that S word. And um, this is stuff that we try to share. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Hope you got some type of, uh, you know, hopefully you got some type of useful information out of this. I do, I do think that um, this was a pretty interesting article looking at the several different dynamics and factors, especially since the silver rabbit hole runs so deep. Also remember, if you guys want to subscribe, I'm doing a uh, giveaway soon. And also, we are approaching 100,000 subscribers, so I'll be announcing the two winners of the giveaway as I'm jumping out of an airplane skydiving. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.